glad to be here. Uh, I'd like to thank you for taking our time to be here uh, this afternoon. I want you to put your hands together for yourself. Because you are indeed part of something extraordinary. And when I say extraordinary, every great business idea started with a pitch. And that's what we're here to do today. Uh, millions of people will leave the speech and go watch the premiership game this weekend. But they forget in a hurry that the history of the premiership started with a pitch. Uh, some businessmen in 1988 got into a certain hotel in London and they said we can change this division game, division one and two and three, and turn it around and they formed the premiership. And today, the premiership is Britain's biggest export to the world, even more than crude oil that they get. So everything starts with an idea, and it's incumbent on us to understand that any product can be sold. I'm sure when you told somebody that football can be this popular and big as at 70, they will never believe you. And that's what we're here to do today. So no ideas wasted. Even if you don't make the cut today, it's just the beginning of the rest of your lives. So be excited about that, and be excited about the prospect, and the contact, and the networking you will have here. Because what is more important is the network of people you're meet here today. So I'd like to welcome all of you once again on board. My name is Rufai Hosseini, Morning Show host, Inspiration FM. Uh, I'm very passionate about this, and uh, most of uh, the participants in this program obviously know me from Thursday. I had a session on Thursday. If you like my session, put your hands together. If you like it. Thank you so much. And I'm really passionate about business, and um, yeah, I'm a second time entrepreneur. I'm starting up a little business myself. But real quickly, let us move straight to. I'd like to get a quick opening remark by Mr. Philip. Uh, from uh, Business Day, let's just quickly do this. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Philip. I'm, I'm very excited to see young people. You know, every time I have an opportunity to be in the midst of young people who are doing the right thing, I really get excited. I'd like to welcome you all to this this new apprentice uh, program. Entrepreneurship is uh, you say you, you couldn't have had a better time. Yeah. Do something like this. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, we couldn't have had a better time. You could look back at uh, the story of the Silicon Valley and say maybe it started a long time ago that entrepreneurship should be a way to go. Now, for Nigeria, we are at a crossroad as far as the economy is concerned. As followers of the economy, Mr. Thursday knows that. We are in trying times. Now, these trying times means that uh, people have to get up on their feet and then begin to think for themselves because the future belongs to young people like you. Say yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yeah, okay, great. So, real quickly, right about now, we'll call on the team leaders. Uh, we'll get to the team leaders. See if the team leaders are ready. Let them come forward and we'll start with their esteems. And I can tell you this for a fact, you guys are in for a great time because I can, just with the corner of my eye, I think it's an hydrant expression, with the corner of my eye, I can, I can see some very, you know, amiable people that can really take a look at your business and make some vital investments. So you're not alone in this and you've got great prospects today. So get excited about what will happen today. Are the team leaders ready? That's what I have to get up for them when they come forward. Please ask him in. We'd like to get the question out of everybody for you. Great. Team Pineapple, we've got Team Royalty, Team Io, Team Fabulous, Team Ace, Team Expendables. I'm sure you've been watching a lot of the Expendables yourself. Okay, great. Uh, the first thing to come forward is Team Pineapple for your presentation. Let's put our hands together for them. Educational facilities 
facilities and negligent teachers. That's again lack of attention in class. A lot of us, okay. We all went to school, so we know how it's like for our teachers to leave us behind when we're not keeping up with the rest of them because teachers, some of them are not being paid for, so they don't have time to start talking to you personally. So that's what Lucy is for. Lucy is an app that Lucy is an app that you could go to and our target market basically are the students, parents and schools. We can sell Lucy to parents because definitely every parent wants their child to be successful. And then the students basically because no I don't think anyone actually wants to be a failure. Then also the schools because schools schools will be preferred to realize that students are not passing the game they are supposed to. So they would also be the first ones that you could go to to solve the problem. My name is Simeon Anubi, founder of Hello. Yeah, so I'm a tech entrepreneur and the founder of um, multiple companies. Um, so my question will be first to you guys. Um, I have three questions actually. Because first you said you keep saying app, ah, app, ah, app. Ah. I really don't understand. Um, I did get exactly what you meant by app. Um, could you be more um, specific? Uh, content, how do you get content? Right? How do you get content? Because you're saying it's a search engine that searches multiple. So how do you get content that people search? Then monetization, I think get how you make money from it. Yeah. Okay, this is an option where the master is an app. Like, it's an, it's an app, okay? Like, you, you can download it on your phone and have it on your phone, like the way you use your normal social media apps or like other apps that you have. Do you believe in what you're doing? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I build apps for a living. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> no, 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 I just want to understand. So I'm trying to help you, help, you know, what you're doing. If you say an app, you mean on a phone. Students are not allowed to have phones. So are you saying on the web? Is it a web app? You don't say it's a web app. She's like a lesson teacher on your phone. So when you get home and you need to search something, she like now some most of the websites online, if you search on Google are sometimes biased, and sometimes the information are, the information is wrong. Now what we do is that there, we have moderators of we have moderators like professors in universities who look through the information that before we put it on the app and say whether it's right or wrong, or it's by or if it's biased. And she's more instead of, she's not necessarily an app, she's more of an assistant for many students, not just everybody. Content. In content, like, like I said, we are going to get from the internet, but what will happen is that there will be moderators, which are professors, who look to the information before it's now posted onto the assistant's AI. Uh, Philip, is I, I wanted to find out um, uh, accessibility, you know, whatever you, uh, you come up with, if you're entering the market. Uh, how much research have you done, you know, with regards to this? Product being accessible to your target audience. Um, in most cases, the research we've done is that we've looked we looked through the number of people who use smartphones and use no, um, normal phones, and we also looked at how many people are between the number between people who are passing and who are failing, which um, are, between people who are passing and who are failing. We showed that more people are failing because then they don't understand what their teacher is saying most of the time. And even when they go back to the teacher, they still don't understand. Hi, um, first and foremost, um, wonderful idea. I think it's something that's needed. It's something that's been developed. I'm sure Simeon knows a couple of apps that are already being built. Um, the fact that, how old are you? Okay, so the fact that you noticed and realized that it was a need is a great thing. Um, one of the, my main point was that um, you focused a lot on the application itself, um, but didn't go too much on the cost and cost, and it being commercially viable. One of the things I'd like to know is how much it's going to cost you, what your break even is, um, other sorts of revenue, because in an app, just giving it free does not mean that people are going to use it. Um, one of the challenges we have in Nigeria today is that even though we have uh, 120 million phones, our culture is not like that of people in the UK. We don't download apps 
we don't go to the store and download apps. There has to be a, a, a prompting. A prompting. You have to be prompted. Uh, in Nigeria, we have more problems than most other countries. So you'll find that even your students that you're targeting, their challenges are how do I put airtime on my phone? How do I get food? How do I get money to do this? So the idea of going to a store to download an app just so I can study, even though it should be priority, is not top of their mind. Uh, so also, it would have been good to it be a mobile and a web version so that you have diverse channels. But all in all, I think it's a good, a good product that Simeon should build. <laughs> Um, I guess the one feedback I would give is um, it was it's it's good your delivery what you guys did it was very nice that you introduced Lucy so we all get to hear how Lucy is um, a bit more information about the financials would have been really important like because that's the selling point like how is it going to make money um, I think we also mentioned it before so if you're going to ever give anyone a pitch you need to tell us what the you know the breakdown is because then it shows your investors and all the other people that you understand the business aspect of it that is not just a you know an idea that's yeah a charity or something and even the charity requires financial <laughs> <laughs> but good job well done guys okay my name is Tumiche and this is my partner David and we're from Circus Inc. We're adding value to people around us. It's a beautiful morning today in Lagos but just might not be beautiful for some people. And I think the reason why that is happening is because there are so many things happening to different people. We have the Boko Haram today, we have um, kidnappers, we have accidents due to bad road, and so many people are dying. We understand that um, the government is trying to um, combat what is happening right now, but we also like it if there is something that can sustain people from dying. We don't like the rate at which people are dying. So we'll, it, will be, it will be very good if there's something that can just be in between to stop people from dying. So we came up with an app. And the app is called the Save Me App. Now the app comes in when you are in need. You, you are in a state of emergency. And you need to get to the emergency services around you. Now what this app does is once you tap the app, once you open the mobile application, it immediately sends your location out to the emergency services around you. And that way the emergency services can get to you on time. There are two, there are two faces to this. You can save yourself, you can save someone. There are so many of us that have lo lost loved ones just because there was no time. Time is very important. Last year, there was statistics show that over 7,000 people died. And 54% of these people died because there was not enough time. And we are here to solve this problem. Well, um, good morning again. Good afternoon again. I'm David. So I'm going to be telling you how our application works. It's very simple. Once you install the application, you open the application, there are just two basic buttons. Those two buttons, you can save someone or help someone, you can save yourself. You'll be able to get that information immediately to whether the military, the police, the emergency, everyone around you. That is what that section does. We give, it gets the location and it gets what is actually happening. So we have eliminated that problem of, hey, where are you? He said, hey, someone is dying as you say that. So, we eliminate that problem very, very effectively. Now, the save yourself application. Yes, when you are in a state of panic, you are, you are, when you are in an emergency, you cannot begin to fiddle with your phone. You can only do basic things. So once you bring out your phone and open the application, you click on the save yourself part, you have sent messages to 10 people that you know, that are pre-registered, probably friends and families. They get your location and they get what is shop, happening shop, shop, to you as that time. So as shop, they are getting, shop, 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 they will be able to help you. So as that information shop, gets to your friends and family, it also goes to the emergency agencies. Those ones will be able to decipher or know whether what they are going shop, to do shop, or shop, what shop. is actually happening to you and whether to get someone please, to get please, down there that's close to that place, get down to you. So that's how the app works. Now we are going to our cost structure. 
We are going to be needing about 2 million for this application. We are going to be needing to develop. We are going to be needing to host our application because it's a cloud application. So we need to host that application so it doesn't get, it's, a, it's, a, it's an emergency application. So there cannot be no traffic. It has to be straight. We are going to be needing uh, map power. We are going to be needing people to code these apps. We have a team, but we might need expertise in some areas. So we are going to be needing partners at that part. We are also going to be needing advertisement. The least application that doesn't get advanced, at least they get up to $10,000. We are going to be needing to advertise, so we might need other agencies to partner with us so that they'll be able to fulfill their corporate social responsibility. So over a year, in a year, we can get like 24 million Naira in a year. We've gotten everything and over that we need. So I believe we are true. This is our team. Thank you. Let's go down to business. Okay, so um, I have three things I've written down. Your monetization, your development costs, and your partnerships. Um, if you go back to your slide, first of all, how many people are on this team? We're just seven. Eight. Seven of us. Yeah, I read about nine. And we're wondering what, what will of you do? Some of us are students. Some of us are freelance computer engineers, we just do basically a lot of things. Mm, okay, okay. Okay, so yeah, um, your question, you said the uh, development costs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you did that. Pardon me, please. This, this, this was an error. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry. It's, I'm not going to fail you for that. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay, um, I know what you're going to do. Make up because I'm a developer, so don't worry. Um, but your cost in terms of monetization, um, the lot of things you need put for future presentations, you need to actually look at your cost production. Yeah? And your cost of usage. You need to put your cost of usage. So for instance, you said you're going to drive me 20 naira beats by airtime, right? That means automatically you're telling me you're going to get only 30 percent of the 20 naira, not the 20 naira. Right? Because the telcos will take 70%. So you need to know a lot of other things. But, I mean, I don't fault. It's something you will, you know, you um, Beautiful idea. Trust me, I had this idea some years back. Never, never did anything about it because of the hope. You know. And I think you had something already about it. But look at partnerships. So I'm only going to advise you. I think you had a beautiful pitch. Your costing is, you know, yeah. To, to, you know, slim. You can't do this with this, okay? Um, but we could work on it and I could help you guys work on it huh? so that you could get something better. Thank you very much, sir. Our chickens, we will majorly, we are going to phase two, and that's boilers and layers. Layers, the lady eggs for us, we sell the eggs and then we sell the chickens. And for boilers, we sell them also. We're going to get them from um, when they are little. Um, per egg, it's 100 naira. We've calculated all those. Sorry, next. Thank you. Okay, what do we need? We need their comfort zone, of course, where the chickens are going to stay. We need land. We need feeders and water troughs. Um, our market segment. The next 40... Our market segment. Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations focus that Nigerians are expected to consume two-thirds more animal protein with poultry meat consumption rising nearly 73 percent the current per capita consumption or is 65 x per year our competitive landscape yes we know that there are people that are already carrying out this this um business but the demand for egg has never been fully satisfied and that's why we keep Importing to this country, but we agri land stressors will be the one that will be exporting to them, and they don't need to import to our country anymore. In the future, we hope to expand and grow Nigeria's economy. Economy, the people will like to um, what we would like to go into in the future, but now basically, we're going with poultry. You can contact us www.abilands.com and this is our phone numbers. Yes, this is our, our logo. It looks like it, it's not fully like a circle. It's, yes, it's okay. Sorry, it's a circle. And then we explain it that it's the word, it goes round. 
you can see we have a chickens there and then we have our eggs in the middle. Thank you so much. We hope you invest in our business. Yeah, we do. Um, I like your enthusiasm. Um, like you said, you need to breathe uh, because, like you said, you know, if I had four million naira to drop on the table, I'd be worried of what you spend it on. Because for me, I think you need, it's not about just knowing people who do it, it's about having the hands-on experience yourself, right? This is not a hobby. You're not going to take people's money to fund a hobby. Nobody funds a hobby, nobody funds a lifestyle. People fund businesses. The reason why investors invest in businesses is because they want to make times four, or times 10, if possible, back. So if they are not confident in you, they don't have full confidence in you as the founder or, you know, of the company that they want to invest in. Nobody will invest in you, to be honest. And you need experience. And he made a point, like, who are your team? What are your strengths? You basically just, you know, it was like a flash through your team. I don't know what your, your strength is. I know you're, you know, a bit still young, so there aren't a lot of things that you may have acquired in terms of skill set. But my advice would be go and do internship, go and learn how farming works. Is it, I mean, it's agriculture, you have, you get your hands and feet dirty, but that's how it works, right? I would suggest that, um, having been there before, I would suggest that you try it out. Don't just give a presentation, try it out. So, for instance, a, feed, a poultry farm would cost you 3.4 million. Can you try it out with just 10 chickens? Try with 20. Do you understand? You know, I'm saying this for every other person. So it's not just for you. So for those that are doing the Save Me campaign, the guys that are doing the other, just try something out so that you have a form of experience so that when next you meet, you, I mean, you can, you can meet him in an elevator and you tell him, oh, you remember that thing I pitched? I, I've done it in six months. I've been able to do this. I have 20, you know, eggs to show for it and all that. That is value that he can take back and say, you know what, let's see if you can actually blow this. And that's opportunity for you. So always try and do it. Don't do it for the competition. Don't do it for the high life. Do it for experience. Do you understand? Thank you. Good afternoon, my fellow princesses. Ladies. Nigeria today is not in a really good state. Corruption, tribalism. Less disposable income. Less disposable income for uh, working class people. Take for example a man, sorry, but we still strive for happiness, no, no matter the circumstance. So let's take for example a man who wants to buy a birthday cake for his daughter. The cake doesn't arrive on time, it's not what he asked for, and the quality is poor. Now, even this, this frustration with the inefficiencies and mediocrity of the companies in Nigeria will lead this person to resentment. And we are against mediocrity and inefficiency in cakes and bakes. My name is Cody Ekenta. This is one of my partners, Dami. He is head of research and development. We are both co-founders of Cakes and Bakes and Bikes. And we have three core concepts, convenience, design, and accuracy. We get your cake to you when you want it and how you want it. Problem one, bad timing. The cake did not arrive on time. Imagine this little girl obviously wanted to share the cake and show the cake off to her friends, but couldn't, that's a problem. With this platform, you can solve that problem with the help of, of our website. So on our website, you tell us when you want the cake. We will tell you when we will deliver that day, and it will get to you at that time. The next problem, totally wrong design. The cake was not worth what he asked for. Now, he asked for a big cake. They brought him a green cake. This was probably a miscommunication through the phone or something. So with this app, you can easily design your cake. You will get exactly what you ask for. Next problem. Terrible bakers. Now, I'm sure 
many people, especially kids, will not be happy with these kinds of, 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 of cakes. It's terrible. It's ugly. This is because the bakers are not good enough. The solution to this problem is very simple. We have a rating system. So on that app, you can check the ratings of the bakeries and will direct you to the best bakeries. Also, you can also check by price. So if you want the most affordable prices, we'll give you the ratings of some um, bakeries with the prices. So that way you can get affordable, good quality cakes. How are we going to get these ratings? Feedback from customers. We'll go to these bakeries, ask the customers, what do you think about the cake, the chocolates, the vanilla? They will give us the ratings and that's how we'll put that on our website. Market segmentation. Now this is where the money is. These guys are the working class. They don't have time to go to the bakeries to design and then still come back to collect the cakes. Simple, from your office, you design what you want. If you don't want to design anything, we can randomize something for you and you can still get the cake from wherever you want. Um, in general, I like your pitch. Um, I think one of the things most of you haven't realized is that to actually produce a good or service is very difficult in Nigeria. So when you say things like, we will deliver 50 cakes, and then in three months we'll deliver 80, and then we'll deliver 90. There's a lot of work that goes into doing that. Um, I'll give you an example. There are lots of people who built apps for ticketing, aggregation, and they pitch it to people who use mobile phones. And the numbers tell you that because there are 120 million people, this service will be used because we have to, they have the disposable income. So this sort of service you would pitch to me, I'm in that target market. I use I have three mobile phones, disposable income, two girls, I want their birthdays to be fantastic. But the problem is what you haven't done is an analysis, analysis of the process of opening a cake. One, I will not order the cake. Two, my wife might not order the cake, she's not here. I will tell my PA to order the cake. She will not use an app. She will go to Chocolate Royale, pick the right cake, and if the cake doesn't come, it's her fault. So this app will never see my phone. So you need to look at each process and find out what you are actually doing. The other thing is, nobody here has given us a unique selling point. One point that differentiates your business or your service from all the other services that are existing or that is to come. You need to focus on that your unique selling point. And that's where you now derive what your value is. Um, also, I keep hearing, and when people do statistics, they use Lagos State, 22 million people in Lagos State. I mean, once you conquer Lagos State, you don't need to go to the rest of Nigeria, you don't need to even go to Africa. Lagos State is its own, is the Nirvana for business. But the problem with Lagos State is there are also 822,000 businesses in Lagos State. So you're competing with people who are already in the market. And I keep telling people, in some cases, it's better that you go to a Wary or a Bagon and test out your, your business and your service. The other thing is, um, it means that you need to shrink the market when you start as a small business, as a startup. Um, don't go to Lagos State, try to catch a, or use your own family to use, do that business. If your mother or your sister will not use your service, then there's no reason why the man on the street is going to use your service. And I'm actually presenting to you a fashion app. Yeah. The name of the fashion app is actually called Fashion IQ. It's called a Fashion IQ, but we can also call it Fashionista. Continue. Yeah, um, basically, what's the problem we're trying to solve? Um, people wake up in the morning and they don't actually know what to wear or actually you're going for an occasion and then you don't actually know or you're going for a birthday party, uh, wedding and you don't actually know what you're going to wear to, for that birthday party and you end up scattering your wardrobes or just wearing something that is not actually what you want to wear. 
um, the solution this app is actually made is going to basically there are some QR codes that are on the clothes so it's actually going to scan the QR codes on the clothes then basically those QR codes is going to actually upload the clothes to the internet and basically we have some locally made clothes that actually don't really have those QR codes so you can actually just take the picture of those clothes and then upload it on the internet so we're going to be making use of a machine engine because you can actually simulate a clothes for a particular day and it's actually have to be randomly selecting the clothes for you because we don't want anything that you went simple today and the next one tomorrow so it's going to be working through a machine engine next one Yeah, um, we need like 300,000 naira for the app development. And basically, this advertisement, what we're trying to do in the advertisement area is that we're going to be making use of both Instagram and Facebook. Well, what I'm trying to do with the Instagram, what we're trying to do with the Instagram part is that we're going to basically, we, we are friends actually, so we're going to basically tell our friends about the products, then actually then they make a shout out about the products so basically as i make the, as they make the shout out they have other friends to that who know about it that will get to know about the products and then when they download it and they say it's good then they continue to spread it and we also make use of the facebook we'll pay at least i think it's about five dollars a day or something like that so and then we'll make use of the miscellaneous fee so that's other expenses now our revenue stream yes this is how we're going to gain our money um, we are going to make this application free for the user for 30 days then after which per month you actually pay like 3,000 naira then if you want a yearly subscription you actually pay like 30,000 naira that's like 10% discount off if you're paying like 3,000 times 12 that's the 6,000 so that's off that one there so you can just it's better for you to pay yearly than for you to pay per month so and actually when we actually grow we'll be charging people for adverts that will be placed on our website for the app for a price based on the size and the number of time the app is going to be on our application. Okay, so three slides. When I heard this and I heard what you wanted to do, I was really excited because we were talking about something that way. But the question is, what exactly are you trying to solve? Because I did not see or hear it. Um, your, la your, your third slide says, if I don't know what I'm going to wear, I'm going to scratch a QR code on my clothes, I'm going to upload the clothes to somewhere, and somebody will tell me whether I'm not actually wear the red or blue. I don't get how that is a problem, because I don't think anybody here would wait 30 minutes to get advice from somebody on the web for the clothes I have in my wardrobe to know what and which color to wear. So I mean, I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm thinking. Is it? Do you want like 30 seconds to really explain what you mean by that? Because I am sure five of us are lost as to how the clothes in my wardrobe will be sent somewhere, and the person will come back and tell me, "No, don't wear red. Wear blue. I will blue the game." And the person will tell me, "No, no, no. It doesn't look, look good. How does that work?" How is it a problem? Like, I, I don't see the problem. And don't, you don't need to answer that. I mean, that's where it's lost. Personally, if I can't see the problem, I can't invest in it. Do you understand? So I need to see the problem you're actually solving. And the way you're going about it, do you understand anything in tech? Are you sure you understand stuff in tech? Okay, because of you, I am, I, I am hoping that this day, business day will allow me um, I will be giving um, space to mentor some of you, um, probably maybe one team per week in a, in a month, so that I can you know, better understand how you guys think and help you grow what you want to grow. I'm also a Mara mentor, so if you want to follow me on Mara mentors, you can actually get two minutes. Point of intervention is to say, don't give up. Like she said, there's something in there. Now, how do you how do you get that something in there out? Because there's a lot of uh, rough edges, you know, in what you've presented. Yep. So, so uh, Simeon, Simeon has agreed, and the whole house is a witness. 
that is willing to give one month mentorship, you know, because a lot of you need that mentorship. Because I've heard of, I've heard apps, apps, apps. But in, in all the presentations, nobody really went into these apps, you know. Uh, so we heard of these apps as I guess, you know, what they can do, what they are, you know, what to produce them to do. But the workings of the apps have not been, you know, so maybe that's where Simeon can come in to help. Now, again, I will still go back to the market, you know, because every time you have an idea that is business related, you know, if you're not in literature and are not writing to entertain the world, the market is very important, you know, you must understand the market, you know. So, what I see uh, with regards to this is that you talked about codes, you know, that's where there is a fault with the, with the app itself. Because you talked about code and that you will key in, I mean, scan the code. But I know that there are many clothes in, in, in my wardrobe without codes. You know, so Simeon will help will help to help you guys, you know, to, to come to an understanding of how you relate that to the market.
uh, the Harvard Business School Association of Nigeria, Alumni Association of Nigeria. Please a round of applause for our uh, company. to thank all our sponsors. Um, they've been awesome. They've been really brilliant in partnering with us and believing in our idea. We're extremely very grateful for their support. Here with me are the winners of this year, the first of its kind, the 2016 the CEO attend to the entrepreneurship team. And um, this is Team Royalty. Making up of this team, we have Miriam Olanai, Walter Gauba, David Kagoyi, Aboyeji Yewande, Olasukomi Rafael Olabode, Yonde Titilo and Titiloye, Naomi Ibrahim, and Timisi Ishola. It's been an amazing yet overwhelming six days for the students. We finally have the winner of 2016 CEO Apprentice. We head over to speak to the winners now. Pick up here was uh, teamwork is actually the best. You have to listen to your team members, you don't have to make, make it feel like you're the only one that knows everything. Basically, all my team members were great. It's basically how to own it, just how to run everything, be your own man, be your man, and how to manage a team to work together to achieve a common goal. I'm not here today because it was only me, I'm here today because of other people. So they taught me teamwork and they taught me business. I don't think my idea was the best. There were other competing ideas. I just think because we've done our research well to an extent, and we were able to prove to the judges that, okay, yes, this is a necessity. This is something we need to do for Nigeria. I think that was our most selling point. Our product was uh, an application that was going to help uh, victims connect victims to the necessary emergency units through the people. So someone is to give the app and it will, it will help someone in need, someone in a case of emergency. Yeah, brilliantly spent. At least better than eating in my house, sleeping and waking up. So I actually enjoy myself. With this, we are still going to be learning because we've not learned enough, obviously. But with those learning that we are going to be learning, we are going to be moving forward. We are, we are not going to stop because, as you can see, it is the CEO apprentice. Once you graduate from, from an apprentice, you are what? You are CEO. So we all are officially CEOs. Thank you. Business Day would like to say a huge thank you to all of our guest speakers and our sponsors who have enabled this program to take place. Also, a big thank you to all of the parents and students for your enthusiasm and your active participation throughout the programme.